This video is going to teach you how to winterize your RV yourself. Step by step instructions, all the tools you're going to need, all the parts you're going to need. We'll give you links for that in the info section of the video. So let's get started. Here are the tools you're going to need to winterize your RV. You're going to need a bucket and you might need some PVC fittings. We'll talk about that later on that freshwater holding tank. You're going to need some RV antifreeze. Now this stuff is good down to 50 below. They do make 100 below, so if you need that, you probably need to move. And I'm just kidding, but uh, Prestone does make one for 100 below, and uh, it's probably a buck more a gallon. I think I paid about 250 a gallon for this. This was made by Campco. Got it at Walmart. Going to need some safety glasses, some rubber gloves. Uh, depending on the type of hot tank you have, if you have a uh, tank with a metal plug, you're going to have to check the size, but most of them are an inch and one sixteenths and a socket for that. And uh, a torque wrench to torque that to seven to eight pounds max. If you have a plastic uh, cap on your hot tank, you're not going to need that. You're probably going to need a 15 sixteenths uh, box end wrench here, and I suggest getting a long one, a 12 incher. And uh, when you go to put that plug back in, if it's plastic, you'll only need this. This uh, rector seal works great for uh, sealing those threads. And what I suggest if you have a metal plug is to, uh, you know, always clean your plug up first with a nice stiff brush here. And uh, no wire brush, just plastic. And then with a metal uh, plug, what you want to do is wrap your tape uh, counterclockwise to the direction that it's being threaded into. There's lots of videos on that on the internet. And then put on your rector seal over your Teflon tape. But if you have a plastic plug, all you need is this stuff here. I'm gonna need a, a pen. What I like to do is mark that plug and uh, give you an idea how far to tighten that. And you'll see that in the video. Uh, this plastic brush, this is a real heavy duty. You could use a toothbrush too. Um, you could use a wire brush if you have a metal plug. And this is a number two square drive. And if you don't have a nut driver, no big deal. These are probably gonna get you into more trouble than just doing it by hand because the screws are only about a half inch long. And uh, you'll need that to get your screws out. Most of your RVs have number two square drive. You're gonna need a flathead. Some of the panels you're gonna be taking off may require you to uh, put this in uh, an opening to pop it out and you're also going to need a uh, pair of channel locks uh, you're going to need two a lot of these plugs you have to support on both sides you're going to ruin them so that's it step one make sure that pump is off and also any gas or electric going to the water heater step two drain any water you have in your fresh water tanks in my case, I have a gate valve, but your RV might have a single pipe with a cap you have to remove. Put the cap back on once you're done and close the gate valve if you have a gate valve type. Step three, make sure your AC power is disconnected from the RV. Everything we're doing in there in these next steps can be run off the battery. Step four, make sure those gray and black tanks are empty. Step five is going to be to locate your RV's low point drains. There should be two of them, one for hot, one for cold. The blue is cold, and the red is hot. You're going to take uh, your chain lock pliers and you're going to pull the plugs out of both of these. Now make sure when you're using your chain locks that you support not only the plug itself, the white portion, but you also support the black portion. Sometimes I found it's easier to actually hold the white plug stationary and then to rotate uh, counterclockwise the black portion on these. Also be sure that you don't lose a little white washer when you're taking this apart. We'll talk about that later if you want to get some replacements. When they're done draining just put your plugs back in and make sure you don't over tighten these or you're going to damage that washer. Just snug them and you'll be good to go. Okay, in a pinch, if you need one of those washers and you're not anywhere near an RV dealer, what you could do is try to go to Lowe's and look up one of these packages of Shark Bites. And once you get these, take them out, pop it apart, and 
all you got to do now is pull that washer off and you'll have a brand new washer you know grab a pair of needle nose pliers and pull that old one out that's probably either got a nick in it or you over tighten it and push this in there and you will be good to go we're up to step six you have to locate your water pump now just listen for it in my case it was underneath a seat in the dinette area and you're also going to have to find the bypass valves for your hot tank find where your hot tanks located on the rv and in my case it was a panel that was in a storage area right behind the hot tank just pull the panels off on both of these items and we'll show you what to do next okay we're at the hot tank bypass valves there's three of them top middle and that one down there now if they're open the uh the knob is going to be uh, parallel with the line that it's installed in so this one's open and this one is closed it's perpendicular to the line and the bottom one is open so uh, this would be your configuration for using it during the summer and normal hot tank usage but we're going to uh, shut these and I'll show you what it's going to be for winter use okay so this is in your bypass mode and now the top one is closed it's perpendicular the middle one is parallel with the line it's open and the bottom one is also perpendicular to the line and that's closed and that's your winter configuration give yourself a tip sheet on the back of that panel that you removed for accessing those bypass valves you know, you can see here I've got uh, winter and summer modes, and that'll just help you the next time you go to do this. We're up to step eight. Let's get that access panel off of that hot water tank and relieve some pressure on that water before you pull that plug. You'll see that in the video footage to follow here. Now, you'll, you'll see in my case here this Dometic heater has a plastic plug and the engineer conveniently placed the propane line right in line with the plug so there's no way I can use a socket on this to get it out in my case it requires a 15 16 box end wrench I like using a longer one a 12 inch I'll give you a link for all this stuff in the uh, information section of the video I also recommend buying high quality plugs every year and replacing it these things are easy to damage and you definitely don't want to over tighten them or you're going to crack them or worse you're going to break it off so you'll see the links for the plugs as well and don't get tempted to buy cheap pvc plugs these plugs that i'm recommending are made by the manufacturer the atwood people and yep they're going to cost you a little bit more but they'll be worth it and let's uh, show you how to get this plug off safely and seal it up and put it back on okay uh before we can pull a plug on this hot tank we're gonna have to make sure we relieve some pressure otherwise that thing's gonna be flying out at us like a bullet so easiest way to do that is just uh, take your pressure relief valve here and you know make sure all your powers off you know go to your master switch and in, uh, in your RV instructions and turn all your power off there and uh, go ahead and grab this valve here and open it up okay well I didn't have any pressure that's probably because I uh, had my lines were draining and I also opened up all the faucets to relieve the pressure there and the shower but sometimes this thing will have all sorts of pressure you know maybe you go to winterize it an hour or two after you got back from camping and there's a lot of pressure because the hot tank was uh, still warm and pressurized so we know we don't have any pressure now so we can put that pressure relief valve back and all we got to do now is get our socket and pull that plug okay so the hot tank is now drained and uh, I'm gonna put my plug back in I think that's important if you leave it out and you forget uh, come spring you're gonna have all sorts of problems and uh, while we're talking about that make sure that you run your water on your hot water side in the spring until all the air is out before you turn on that hot tank because if you don't you're gonna have uh, 
one of your heating elements burn out on you within a minute and that is not an easy repair so anyways in my case the plug was plastic so uh, I clean it up with a nice stiff uh, toothbrush or this is a, a brush you could probably buy for uh, gun cleaning etc and uh, after I clean it up I put this Teflon paste on and this stuff is rated for metal or plastic and put it all the way around and start working it perpendicular to the thread so it's it's in all the way and then we're going to put it back on our plug and make sure you just snug this thing if you start getting your torque wrench out for this you are going to ruin it now if you have a uh, a metal plug well you may want to torque that seven or eight pounds max but not the this thing one. i want to talk about is is when you start threading this in it should go nice and easy for a bunch of terms and uh, if it starts binding it up on you the first half or one turn well you've got it cross-threaded you've got to get it out of there and start again and uh, try not to mess up your Teflon paste you're gonna go hand tight until it stops and then we're just gonna snug it with that wrench okay it stopped so I'm ready for my wrench. okay uh, what I did uh, before uh, I started tightening with a wrench I, I tightened it by hand finger tight until I couldn't tighten it anymore and then I made that line there with a permanent marker and that arrow was facing straight up and I ended up getting one and three quarter turn just a hair less and my wrench started slipping off because of uh, because it was definitely tight enough now your mileage may vary but don't get tempted to crank it any more than that and you'll be in good shape step nine we make sure that all faucets on all sinks are off and that includes anything outside and that also includes the shower now what we're going to do is we're going to start filling these lines using the pump but before we can do that uh, filling them with RV this valve right here I'm going to take a picture of it and show you but when it's in its normal position when you're using the RV the lever is in line with this and what we want to do is we want to throw this lever so it's 90 degrees facing up and it will now use the pump to draw the RV antifreeze out of our one gallon jugs after we take that plug out. Okay, so I opened up my valve and I took my cap off my hose and I put it to the bottom and just to keep the hose at the bottom of the gallon I stuck a pair of channel locks in here I had to uh, walk away also to turn on the pump so this helps you know keep that uh, hose from moving and after the uh, pump was on for maybe oh I don't know maybe only 25-30 seconds uh, it only took about uh, maybe a little over of a half a gallon for it to pressurize the system now we can walk around and start turning on faucets but before I do that I think I'm gonna fill this jug again and that way uh, if the uh, pump kicks on again it's gonna have plenty in there and not start sucking air okay our water pump is still on now let's go to these sinks let's get rid of that water in the lines Oh, there we go. I don't want to waste too much. Okay, now I'm going to go to the hot side. Let's check our jug, see how we're doing. We're just about empty again. Now I could have just filled this whole bucket full of RV solution, but I was kind of curious to see how much it was going to take, and maybe next year I will. Let's fill this bottle again. Now this particular RV has a macerator under the kitchen sink. All that is is a fancy word for an electric grinder, and when that tank fills, the pump goes on. Well, we got to make sure that fills 
at least once with the RV antifreeze. So I got my bottle filled again and let's open this up and wait for that to kick off again. We'll hear it. There it goes. We know we're good now, you know. Yeah, it took another, uh, maybe a gallon or or close to it of uh, RV fluid, but we got to make sure that macerator is filled with RV antifreeze or it's going to bust by spring sure as anything. Bathroom sink. Pot's done. Cold's done. Now we'll get that shower. We filled our jug again. Okay. This wasn't good. I don't want to waste too much. The cold side. And that's good. Okay, we also have to make sure that clear water is all gone from the toilet system as well. And we're good. And I like holding down that pedal halfway and putting in at least a couple cups worth in there. And that will do it. One last step on this toilet, we're going to put cellophane in overlap by at least two or three inches and stretch it over and that's it. That will prevent this from uh, evaporating what's in there and allowing any gases to come up through. Okay, in the case of my RV, I've got two outside spigots here that I'm going to have to run RV antifreeze through as well. You may have an outside shower, but you've got to get those done too. Bucket. You don't want RV going all over your driveway. Okay. Okay, and this is the last outside water spigot. Open up one side. Close that. Now the other one didn't have a hot and cold, so I've got to do these individually. Open up the cold side. Same thing, get that clear water out. And now we're looking good. Okay, so all sinks, all fixtures, all tanks are empty. Winterize with RV antifreeze. We just want to make sure we turn off that water pump. We don't want that going on again. We're done doing all of our faucets. We made sure that our macerator filled up with RV uh, antifreeze and that is good to go. And any outside spigots, shower, we made sure that our little white o-ring wasn't missing from this black connector. Anyways, when you do have those, don't try to over tighten these and uh, just make sure that you check for any leaks in the spring and we're not going to touch that lever either. We're going to leave that alone. We don't want this, uh, for some reason if a spigot gets opened, we want it drawn from these lines that are full of RV. We don't want to take in any fresh water from that uh, water tank that should have been emptied. Step 10, clean up and final shutdown steps. When I'm done cleaning out my sinks, I like to close all the stoppers and that'll keep my uh, P-trap water from evaporating and allowing any smells to enter the RV. Same thing for that kitchen sink. We want to make sure that stopper is in so it is sealed and we're not allowing any gases to come up through the RV during storage.
Don't forget those deodorizers. What I do is take some of the RV antifreeze in a paper bowl and uh, dissolve them in that and then dump the port -a pack down the toilet and the uh, eliminate down the sink because I have two gray tanks. I have to do one on each. All right, one of the last steps here. We want to make sure no power is on the motorhome at all. So we're going to pull any cables off the outside. We're going to turn our master switch if you have one. In this case, the key comes out. So now we know there is no power going into the motorhome. We're going to make sure both our tanks are off. Now, obviously, if one's empty, you know, get it filled for your first camping adventure in the spring, and you won't have to worry about it then. And the other thing you want to do is get that battery out of there. You know, you don't want that sitting out in the elements. So open the cover on that and take off the connectors. Mark them properly if they aren't marked. And then uh, get that battery on top of a nice thick piece of wood in a warm basement. Don't set it on bare concrete and uh, you'll be all set. I recommend using a trickle charger as well during the winter and it'll be in good shape by spring. Well. That'll do it. You just winterized your own RV, and I guarantee you, you saved $100, and you know you did it right. It cost me about $21 for RV antifreeze and the tools you'll use every year, so don't worry about spending some money on those. I've got links to all the tools you're going to need in the information section of this video, and I hope you liked it. If you did, please subscribe to our Pompano Brownie channel, and that'll do it for this video.